this is an Nexus Special, Episode 35, Apple October Event, on Thursday, October 16th, 2014, and now, change is in the air. This Nexus Special is hosted by Brian Mitchell and Ryan Rampersad. Hey, how's it going? It's going well, how about you? I'm pretty good. It's good. So you, you missed part of the, the big event today. But... I did miss part of the big event. I had to go to class. Well, I... Got out of class, saw it, and then went to class right after, so had a perfect window. Yeah, I, I got maybe 15 minutes before class started. I was just seeing the uh, iOS you know, numbers and then some features, and then I saw some Mac features like handoff or, or continuity, and then I had to go to class. And then Stephen Colbert with some weird naming of their execs. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, well, well, something about a honeydew melon or something? I don't even know. Well, I think Tim Cook was uh, Supreme Honeycrisp or yes, something. Yes, right, Honeycrisp, right. Crisp. I don't know. They're they're poking fun, but it was a little weird. That's pretty uh, funny, really? Yeah, that's, that's true. Well, but, if you don't know what we're talking about, we are talking about uh, uh, the Apple event, the second Apple event, in fact, this fall the October Apple event, where they showed what? What are the major things? Um, the main things were um, releasing OS X Yosemite today, um, announcing iOS 8.1 and Apple Pay would be released on Monday. Um, the iPad Air 2 was released and announced. The iPad Mini 3 uh, discounts on iPad Mini 2 and iPad Mini. In addition to the iMac with Retina display with a 5K display for the 27-inch. And, of course... Finally, a Mac Mini update. Who knew? People have been hoping for it, I think, for years. almost a year now. Mm-hmm. Years, yeah. Yeah, so, so we, we can go through some of these. Uh, I think the first thing, well, they did some numbers, and they said that the iOS 8 was a uh, pretty fast rollout, and they were so happy, blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. And they compared it to Android. And how and wonderful it was. I mean, so awful. Android, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though the iOS 7 adoption rate was Faster. much higher than 8. But... Well, yeah, you know, bugs. Yeah. Uh, they also, um, you know, actually made hardware this 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 event, so we can talk about that. They did two tablets. Yes. The, the first one that they took a while introducing was the iPad Air 2, which now comes in gold in addition to silver and space gray. Um, they have the, the, the same Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi and cellular. Um, they also, like the iPhone, skip the 32 gigabyte configuration and just go 16 for 499, 64 for 599, and 128 for 699. Those are the Wi-Fi models. It is thinner at 6.1 millimeters, I believe, compared to 7.2 or something mm-hmm. from the old iPad Air. And um, it's the same 9.7 inch display. It's got thinner or no, or no air gaps between the display. They laminated it. And they added so, some kind of um, ref- anti-reflective coating, which I think is really cool. Yeah, they said that's the first for a tablet. Mm-hmm. So, and they gave it the A8X CPU with also an M8 motion coprocessor. So did and we this... did we learn anything about that? The A8X. Yes, it is forty percent faster at CPU and two point five times faster at GPU. Hmm. They showed a nice chart with exponential growth for GPU performance for all the iPads. So why did they? put this chip in this ipad do you do you know any of good reasons i think they're really pushing for gaming okay so it's a gaming push okay that's interesting and they demoed uh they demoed a game i don't remember what it was i wasn't really paying attention during that time mm-hmm. but they they're pushing for metal their new low-level game framework for ios 8 the camera got a few updates um probably update hardware wise but they now like to do slow-mo 120 frames per second mm-hmm. Time lapse panorama up to 43 megapixels. I'm not sure if the front, FaceTime HD was they, uh, somewhere. Around. I read that it was uh, improved, but they didn't say how. Yeah, I, don't, I I could actually pull up the old iPad Air specs, and that might help a little bit for comparing here. They also uh, have decided to put Apple Pay into your iPad, so now you can bash your iPad against the little payment thing. Well, no, I don't think they had NFC. I think it's just for in apps. Oh, so okay. just for Apple Pay. That that would be good then, because otherwise that would be uh, very awkward. Yeah. Okay. So I do have some specs in the camera. The camera is eight megapixels. The backside mm-hmm. up from five before. It has the same autofocus, same aperture, um, the new panorama, and that kind of thing. The 
front facing I, uh, FaceTime, I think, can do um, burst mode. That's new timer mode, exposure control, and they say improved face detection, and then HDR auto. I think they said they could do that without taking multiple pictures. Yes, yep, that's a new thing, yep. Same 1.2 megapixels. They released the f-stop of 2.2, mm-hmm. which they released for the old iPad Air. The iPad Air 2 also has a Touch ID sensor on the home button. That's good. It also now supports 802.11 AC, has Bluetooth 4, and let's see, what else is new here? It's available in all the carriers. Uh, all they, the carriers. they also um, have done a new, a new SIM card technology, uh, Apple SIM is what they're calling it. Yeah, and this was just discovered on their website. They didn't talk about it in the keynote. And what it looks like is this is supposed to allow you to travel around the U.S. or in Europe and uh, just, or maybe just the U.K. for now. It's U.S. and U.K., yep. U.S. and U.K. for now, okay. For supported carriers, you can just add a plan for, like, a short time so you're not committed to a contract or two years or anything. So for traveling, it might be nice to get data on your iPad. Or And what I think is really cool is that it's one SIM card, and you can switch it in the software on the iPad to any of the three non-Verizon characters in the U.S. Yeah, I think that's a very cool thing as well. Now, it, it, the same iPad should and probably will work for Verizon, but you just have to go into a store to get their card. You can't switch on demand, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, the battery life is the same from different iPads. However, the new one is a 27.3 watt hour, whereas the... The iPad Air 1 was at 32.4, so I think it's a little more energy efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got the barometer in addition to the, the accelerometer, 3x yep. gyroscope, mm-hmm. and that, the M8. And, of course, comes with iOS 8.1 and all that good stuff. And so when does this when does this come out? When can you get one? Uh, I missed that. I, don't, I think maybe even now, actually. Wow, that was easy. Okay, October 17th. Okay. So Friday. Yes. Great. Friday. See, and then they also announced the iPad Mini 3, which is the same as the iPad Mini, but with Touch ID, as far as I can tell. Yeah. It, the iPad Mini 2 is then $100 re- cheaper. What's so. really weird about this iPad Mini 3 is that they kept the A7. Yeah, there's the only incentive is Touch ID, mm-hmm. basically. And I don't really know if that's a huge incentive in general. I feel like the only incentive is for those who have an iPad mini. The first gen. Yeah. Well, the first gen, if you, if you want a significant upgrade, but like my iPad mini, my iPad mini two, uh, 32 gigabyte, I could probably sell that for 450 because it's halfway between 16 and 64 gigs. Mm -hmm. And then I could just buy an iPad mini three with 64 for $50 basically if I could sell mine. Yeah. That's the hard part. So I don't know. I just don't think it's much of an upgrade. So I don't I don't think that's what they're targeting. I also think think, it, think it's weird that they didn't keep the uh, processor parity moving forward on these these iPads. I thought they would have wanted to keep trying to do that. Yeah, and and uh, the iPad Mini three doesn't have eight to eleven AC either. Uh, the camera is the same. It's basically just added Touch ID and said, "Here we go. Let's uh, call it good." Yeah, and in fact, the um, iPad Mini doesn't apparently use the Apple SIM technology. It uses just a regular Nano SIM. Very hmm. strange. Yeah, and then they're still selling the, the normal iPad Mini with that A5 CPU from 2011. Well, I mean, at least you didn't say iPad 2, because we all know how long that was around. Yeah, oh, I'm glad that's done. Well, hopefully. It'll yeah, right. Awesome, are they? Uh-huh. I go to iPad... And I don't think anybody has one anymore. I think they're gone. Good. Yeah, they're, that's that's done. Okay, that's you know when you go to this uh, iPad compare page, unlike other pages, I think it seems backwards. Like the best one is first, and then it goes down to the iPad Mini oldest one. Very strange. Yeah, that's true. They usually go the small other, the other way. Yeah, but the iPad Mini is now two hundred and forty nine dollars if you want a sixteen gigabyte tablet that's from. Three years ago. And then right. it has ancient screen technology. Oh, that wonderful 1024 by 768. Oh, man, that just, those numbers are too low for me. I don't even know what that means anymore. Yeah. So they they announced um, iOS 8.1, right? And that, that just contains Apple Pay, but what else? Um, I 
don't actually know. There are probably some bug fixes. Yeah, I think it's bug fixes. They're also bringing uh, back... Oh, and continuity, actually, for Yosemite. Oh, right, yeah. Mm-hmm, that makes sense. And they're also bringing back um, camera roll. Oh, right, yeah, that's that's right, because people were complaining about that. Because in 8.0, they have just your recently added photos and the public beta of iCloud Photo Library. Mm-hmm. I'll probably be giving that a try one of these days here. And so, so when does that come out? That comes out on Monday? Monday, yep. That sounds good. I think it's interesting they're starting on a Monday because it leaves them a whole week to deal with the issues. Yeah, the which I'm sure they'll find. Wednesday release. So hopefully that goes smoothly. We'll see. Mm-hmm. And so uh, any any new stuff with uh, Yosemite? Um, well, that adds many large changes. The whole user interface redesign, mm-hmm. continuity, handoff, which allows you to start from where you were on other Macs or iPads or iPhones, mm-hmm. jump around. It comes with iTunes 12. Um, yeah, most icons are re- redeveloped as a really big translucency. I think it supports everything that Maverick supports. However, it's more graphically intense. My 2008 MacBook slug is very, very sluggish on yeah, it. Yeah, my MacBook Air is probably not going to like it then. Well, yours, well, what what GPU is that running? Is that a uh, it's 3000? Probably 3000, yeah. Okay. I have a what, NVIDIA 9400M, so it's probably a little better than that. It might but... not even be 3000, actually, because 4000 came with... 4000 yeah. was an Ivy Bridge. Really? Okay. Okay, yeah, then it might be... Yeah, you're right, because it is a Sandy Bridge then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and so now uh, Yosemite has been released. You can download it, experience the wonderful bugs that are in it. Well, it, it's been pretty stable. I've had it on my MacBook for the past, about the past month on the public betas, and it's been pretty smooth for me. That's good. I'll probably wait a few weeks or until the first, I don't know, point update, just, just to be sure that it works. That's probably a good idea. I'm going to risk getting an update my uh, Hackintosh here tonight. I love how you're going to risk updating a Hackintosh. Like, that is so risky just on its own. I've I've updated every point release every day it's come out. It's been, I mean, maybe I lose trim support in my SSD for a week or two, but otherwise it's pretty good. Uh, you know, trim support's pretty important. I feel like a week or two isn't going to kill it. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, it's it's been a long time since the... Mac Mini has had an update. I heard that got updated. It got some love today, yeah? They uh, have now put in a Intel i5 CPU, the new Haswell, with uh, Iris Pro or HD, uh, what, 5000 graphics? Yeah, something like that. They also dropped the price to 499 for the entry level, in addition to a 699 and 999 upper level that starts at the 1.4 gigahertz dual core i5, and then 2.6 and 2.8. They're all the dual dual core i5s. However, well, the upper models are also configured configurable to an i7. Yep, but still dual core, which is weird. Yeah, though they're definitely mobile CPUs. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of weird that they didn't wait just like two weeks more so they could put Broadwell chips in. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I think maybe this will keep costs down so they could sell that $400 one and still make a lot on it. I suppose, yeah. And of course, the 499 one only has four gigabytes by default. The 699 has eight gigabytes of memory by default, which is better. Uh, the uh, the the storage options are all spinning drives, but if you get the top tier one, which is you know a thousand dollars, you can get an optional. You, you get well, one terabyte fusion drive, so I suppose that's pretty good. Yeah, and the the top two you can also put in a solid state or fusion. Yeah, and maybe the bottom one too. Mm-hmm. Or just upgrade it yourself and save some money. That's probably the best choice. Same with RAM. The baseline comes with 4 and the upper 2 come with 8. All configurable up to 16. It has a new new Wi-Fi AC. That's that's uh, always good. It's got 2 Thunderbolt 2, HDMI, your three USB, 4 USB 3, and a strange SDXC slot on the back. But Very weird. Well, I'm sure someone enjoys it. I'm so. sure I'm sure it is really useful, but it's so weird to have that slot on the back of your computer. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. But the front is what just the front just has that little black dot for infrared. Which is which is awful. The, Although many people do use it as a home home theater box, I think. I know, so but it looks so there. dumb there. Yeah. Now I also noticed that the home the the power button, which I just called the home button, is literally <laughs> curved. 
because it's on the curved edge of the device. Yeah, it's it's not as subtly curved as the IMAX, which are I think just a just a hair curved. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a weird looking thing. It's hard to find when you're just kind of fumbling behind it. Yeah, so, so I'm glad that Mac Mini got an update. Uh, it's it, w- it was not nearly as a radical update as I thought they might do upon it. You know, I thought they might make it a little bit more spiffy. Yeah, I was, I was expecting a little more, but maybe next year. Or, or like, you know, every you know every four years, I think might be what we're going for. They, they gave it. They gave it Ivy Bridge, I believe. There was one in 2012. Okay, so every three years. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get there. And so, what was the uh, the big one? What 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 big thing came out today? The big one was the new iMac 27 inch with a 5K Retina display. Now, this thing has a resolution of 5120 by 2880, which is 14.7 million pixels. Is that which I pixels? Ridiculous. And so. If you if you want to view a photo at full size, it better be 15 megapixels or more, unless or 14.7 megapixels or more, unless you're going to see pixelation and scaling, which I think is kind of an interesting way to think about it. That is really interesting to think about, actually. Because normally your computer screen's a lot smaller than the photo, so you can zoom in, but zooming in on this doesn't really help. And it'll just force you to get a better camera, I guess. Yeah. And so this starts at 24.99. Um, it comes with a 3.5 gigahertz. Quad core i5, which is and then configurable up to a 4.0 gigahertz quad core i7. Yep. The first, I think, four gigahertz CPU Apple's ever put in a machine. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so, interesting. That's exciting. Uh, it, it comes standard with uh, eight gigabytes of memory. That that's good. Uh, you can configure it to 16 or 32. Comes with a one terabyte Fusion drive. You can configure it into various things that are expensive. <laughs> Uh, the the graphics are a little bit weird. They're uh, Radeon Mobile R9 290X, and I don't know what that compares to. Yeah, I was, I was looking up. It seems to be between the NVIDIA 860M and 880M. Uh, I probably, I don't know if an 870 is even a thing, probably. I'm not sure. I have so no it's, idea. It's, it's not your low end, but it's a mid-range, mid-range one. And then you have your... your Radeon R9 M295X, which is a little nicer. And that's got 4 gigabytes of video RAM, and the other one has 2 gigabytes. You know, because they're mobile parts, I really wonder if they will last. Like, will they be fast enough for a long period of time, you know, for that screen to be able to keep up with? Yeah, I I would definitely get the higher-end one, but, I mean, yeah, I'm curious to see how well it'll do. Because, you know, they have the two Fire Pros in the Mac Pro, and you know the Fire Pro is in, in it's a you know a workstation class card. It's not for a regular computer. It's for something that's supposed to be doing really difficult, hard, and hot and heavy work. Whereas a mobile card is not designed for that. And it's really weird to be pushing you know 5K resolutions on just a mobile graphics card. Yeah, I feel the iMac is designed in a way that it's basically taking higher, mid- or higher-range mobile things and mm-hmm. putting it in a desktop to keep it thin and cooler. Okay. I I would personally be more than okay with a thicker iMac that has desktop-class hardware right. for better performance. Mm-hmm. But It's just something they never really did, ever. Yeah. So what didn't show up? Uh, I don't. I, I didn't see, like, a uh, independent non-iMac version. Yep, the Thunderbolt display still isn't a thing. I think that's... Part of that is because currently Thunderbolt 2 uses the DisplayPort 1.2 spec, mm-hmm. and that only supports 4K, whereas DisplayPort 1.3 on maybe Thunderbolt 3 will support the bandwidth needed for a 5K display. That explains it, then. That's that's my that's my guess. So they're probably going to wait for it to uh, propagate. Probably another year, and then they'll have higher... Um, they'll be making more of them, which will probably bring price, prices down. And, mm-hmm. I also thought it was kind of interesting that they didn't make a smaller... So this is a 27-inch one, but a, a smaller, like their 21-and-a-half-inch model. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't put a fork, just a plain 4K right. screen. Right, mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe e- we'll even if that, that one was too. just... Uh, you know, even if that smaller one still cost a lot, it would have been nice to have that option, too. I'm guessing they wouldn't have made as much money on that. Well, so that, that could fine. be, but it's also possible that just nobody was making panels for that particular size. It's possible. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd hope that Apple would have the power to do that if they wanted it. But 
Well, you know, every everything Apple gets is from a third party. They don't really make technically their own displays. It's just they buy yeah. them. But we we also didn't see the Retina display MacBook Air, which has been rumored. Oh, but... such a shame. Yeah. Well, that's probably next year. Yeah, I think they're 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 probably waiting on at least one of two things. They're either waiting for uh, Broadwell to stabilize and have a consistent supply, uh, and then to all they're probably also waiting for the choice: do we actually use Broadwell or do we just wait another nine months and actually just use whatever the thing is after Broadwell? Yeah, and that's probably a pretty hard choice because Broadwell's great and all, but it's not new anymore. Yeah. They're they kind of missed their their window. Uh, however, the MacBooks usually have come out with the CPUs that have been out for a month or two. Yeah, I've noticed. But so, do you yeah. think this uh, this event was good? It was. They introduced things that I had I'd heard pretty much everything about everything they released. Not everything, but rumors about every product that was updated. Yeah, um, I think it was a mediocre event. It you know they introduced new things. Um, I mean, Maybe the most exciting thing is Yosemite being released. Is that directly affects me the most? I mean, as far as events go, we haven't heard Craig Federici come up on stage and make jokes for quite a few months, so it was it refreshing. Was yeah, that that was very refreshing. It was it was kind of it was odd in their humor, and there I noticed there was a lot of stuttering more than any other event that I've noticed. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I I agree that this event feels really weird, and I think Apple even sees that it's weird like we have to do an event for the ipad because we think it's a big deal so we want everybody else to think it's a big deal but is it a big enough deal okay now we have to do some max now what do we have to do with the max is that a big enough deal so they are in a hard spot with that yeah there there were features that you can't just say oh updated the stuff right but they're not quite big enough to really justify a whole event for exactly it. Yeah, it, it seems really tough to have to make features that are, you know, useful, but then also interesting enough to do all this event work behind it. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I'm looking forward to the Apple Watch being released. I'm I'm curious if they're going to do another event to announce the release day, or if they're just going to suddenly say, oh, here it is. You know, I think they'd probably just put up the release date on the website, uh, probably, and then, in addition... When it actually comes out, they might do something then too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The I think the SDK for the watch comes out sometime next month, sometime in November. Yeah, they announced that today too. I'm excited for that. I think that's going to be interesting to see developers play around with that. Well, so I think it's also interesting when you get the SDK. I assume that it comes with some kind of uh, emulator for the watch interface, so yeah, you can test your own. Yeah, but bundled with. Apple Watch Simulator. Yeah, so I think it'd be really interesting to not only be able to play with your own app, that if you you know made some kind of Apple Watch app, you could do that, but then also play with the broader broader system a little bit because the interface on that is just so different than any other interface Apple's really ever used. Yeah, that that wheel will be. I'm I'm hoping it'll be a success. We'll see. Apple will find out pretty quick. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see whether or not I should buy it on release day. And hope for the best, or oh. wait a month, and if it's a flop, then I am okay, but... Well, you know, they always say with first-gen products is to not buy the first-gen. Yeah. That's what they always say, and I sort of pretty much agree. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I think that that pretty much sums up all the event stuff. So, uh, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at vman4789, or at tech4789 or my website at brianm.me yeah you and your dot me domain names that's pretty good uh, yeah. yeah that one wasn't paid i also own ibry.me but i haven't that just redirects for now i haven't found a use for it yet that still is good though <laughs> that's that's great well and of course you could find me just about everywhere but especially on the twitter ryan amar and of course on my blog which uh you can just google me and you'll find it and, uh, you know, I, I post not only links there, but I also post links that become show notes for these, these podcasts that I keep doing throughout the week. So you can always uh, stay up to date before the show even happens. Well, thanks again for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, have a good one. Thank you.